Life most likely evolved on Earth sometime between three and a half and four billion years ago, during the Archean eon of Earth history. The origin of life was followed by another major milestone in Earth history. When photoautotrophic organisms like cyanobacteria originated on Earth, they began to produce oxygen as a byproduct of their metabolic reaction called photosynthesis. Over hundreds of millions of years, the oxygen produced by these early life forms accumulated in the ocean and atmosphere, transforming our world and setting the stage for things to come. We refer to this time when the ocean and atmosphere began to contain oxygen as the first great oxygenation event. It also marked the start of the Proterozoic Eon of Earth history, which lasted from two and a half billion years ago to 541 million years ago. In general, the Proterozoic represents the time interval in Earth history between the appearance of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere and the origin of animal life. All life forms at the beginning of the Proterozoic were morphologically, ecologically, and ultrastructurally very simple. At the start of the Proterozoic, virtually all organisms on Earth resembled unicellular bacteria. As time passed, a variety of new and wonderfully diverse life forms began to originate including microscopic multicellular organisms made up of multiple cells, as well as much larger organisms like Grapania, which left some of the oldest macroscopic fossils which can be seen with the naked eye. Grapania is now extinct, but it was probably a tube-shaped organism of some sort. In any case, it was the first of many large organisms that produced leafy fossils. If any of these organisms were alive today, you would probably call them seaweed or algae. It is likely that most, if not all of these organisms were multicellular photoautotrophs. By the end of the Proterozoic, new, large, complex, multicellular organisms were evolving on Earth, unlike any that had come before. Perhaps most importantly, the first animals, like sponges, appeared on Earth for the first time at the end of the Proterozoic. So, by the end of the Proterozoic Eon, the ocean was teeming with new and diverse forms of life, which were poised to conquer the planet. But where did animals and other large complex organisms come from? What did the first animals look like? And how did early animals change the world around them? Before we tackle these questions, we need to review the tree of life. The tree of life on earth has three main branches. We refer to these branches as domains. The three domains are bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota. Bacteria tend to be small unicellular microorganisms, which are generally shaped like rods or spheres. Archaea are virtually identical to bacteria in terms of morphology and appearance. They are also small unicellular microorganisms. Indeed, both bacteria and archaea are considered prokaryotes. Prokaryotes have cells or prokaryotic cells, which can be easily distinguished from those of organisms in the domain eukaryota. The eukaryota domain includes all other forms of life including virtually all large complex and multicellular life forms like plants, animals, fungi, and various other microscopic organisms that we call protists. 
Of course, as animals, we also belong to eukaryota. Eukaryotes have eukaryotic cells, which are generally more complex than prokaryotic cells. Indeed, there are many differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Eukaryotes contain membrane-bound organelles like cell nuclei, mitochondria, and chloroplasts, which are generally missing in prokaryotes. Mitochondria are responsible for respiration. Chloroplasts perform photosynthesis. Eukaryotic cells also tend to be much larger than prokaryotic cells. Not to mention, eukaryotic cells tend to occur in large multicellular organisms, while prokaryotes are almost always unicellular. Given that prokaryotes are smaller, more rudimentary unicellular organisms, scientists believe they evolved first on Earth sometime during the Archean Eon. Eukaryotes must have evolved from prokaryotes later, sometime during the Archean or the Proterozoic. Scientists theorize that eukaryotes originated from prokaryotes through a process called endosymbiosis. According to the theory of endosymbiosis, the different membrane-bound organelles found in eukaryotes evolved from individual single-celled prokaryotes living together in harmonious symbiotic relationships. Under one scenario, the ancestor of all eukaryotic life was a prokaryote that ingested another prokaryote, perhaps for food. However, the second prokaryote was not digested, degraded, or destroyed. Instead, it survived and was retained inside the other cell, where it established a mutually beneficial relationship. In this way, it may have served as a rudimentary organelle eventually evolving over many generations into a mitochondrion, which could be used in respiration. The theory of endosymbiosis, notably, can help to explain a great variety of observations. For example, it can explain why some eukaryotes, like plants and algae, have both mitochondria and chloroplasts, and do respiration and photosynthesis, while other eukaryotes, like fungi and animals, only have mitochondria and can only do respiration. According to the theory, plants and algae have inherited their chloroplasts from an ancestor that somehow ingested a second symbiotic prokaryote capable of photosynthesis. In any case, there are an array of fossils of multicellular organisms with large cells, which indicate that eukaryotes evolved sometime before 1.8 billion years ago. Although we have a particularly good idea of how and when eukaryotes evolved on Earth, there are a lot more uncertainties concerning the origin of animals. Part of the problem is that the oldest animals are likely now extinct and probably didn't look anything like animals that are alive today. So, even if they left behind fossils, it would be very difficult to tell that those fossils were produced by animals. The conventional thinking is that sponges were the first animals to appear on Earth. Unlike other animals, sponges do not have true tissues. Their bodies consist of only two thin layers of unspecialized cells, and they do not contain nervous, digestive, or circulatory systems. They are very, very simple. For this reason, scientists generally believe that sponges were the first to branch off the evolutionary tree from the common ancestor of all animals. 
Consistent with this hypothesis, there is some evidence to suggest that sponges were in fact the first animals on Earth. But to tell this story, we need to go back to an, imp an important event in the Late Proterozoic. The Late Proterozoic Ice Age during the Cryogenian period of Earth history around 700 million years ago. This ice age was, perhaps, the most intense glaciation in Earth history. During this glaciation, ice sheets, ice shelves, and sea ice grew from the poles, covering the entire surface of the planet in ice. At the equator, this glacier probably was several miles thick, leaving very little land or ocean exposed to the sun or air. The earth was a snowball covered in ice. When scientists analyzed the chemicals found in rocks from this cryogenian period, or snowball earth period, they found an unusual compound, a steroid, which we call a biomarker. A biomarker is like a chemical fossil. It is a measurable substance that indicates that an organism was present at the time that a rock was deposited in the past. In this case, the presence of this steroid biomarker in cryogenian rocks strongly suggests that sponges evolved and were present during the late Proterozoic Snowball Earth Ice Age. Amazingly, sponges were living and evolving somewhere beneath this block of ice called Snowball Earth. The cryogenian rocks also contain fossils. Each of these fossils consists of many chambers built up on top of each other. These chambered fossils are unlike any animals that are alive today. And they do not resemble any known sponge fossils that have been collected from much younger rocks. But some scientists have hypothesized that these chambered fossils were produced by sponge-like animals. In any case, the late Proterozoic Ice Age ended around 635 million years ago, and the snowball Earth melted in one of the most spectacular records of deglaciation in Earth history. The end of the snowball Earth glaciation around 635 million years ago marked the beginning of the Ediacaran period of Earth history. Rocks of Ediacaran age include a wealth of eukaryotic fossils, including many different types of seaweed and algae. They also contain some of the oldest conclusive evidence of animal life. Each of these spheroidal microfossils are less than a millimeter in scale. But as you can see, each sphere consists of multiple cells. Scientists argue that these microfossils are remains of embryos produced during the reproduction of animals that lived more than 580 million years ago during the Ediacaran period. These spheroidal microfossils have been collected with a variety of annulated tubular microfossils. These tubular microfossils somewhat resemble tubes produced by modern marine worms called serpulids, suggesting that they were produced by worm-like animals that lived during the Ediacaran period. So, there is good reason to think that animals evolved sometime late in the Proterozoic, either in the Cryogenian period or during the Ediacaran period. But there were other major events in the Ediacaran as well. Rocks of Ediacaran age contain a diverse, mysterious, and enigmatic array of fossils, which are collectively known as the Ediacara biota. These fossils occur all around the world, but were produced by life forms that are now extinct. 
They represent a variety of different types of organisms that lived in the ocean between 540 and 570 million years ago. Those organisms came in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some were frond-like. Others were shaped like little disks. Some may have swam through the water while others crawled along the sea floor. Some of the organisms in the Ediacara biota were probably animals. Others may have been prokaryotes, or fungi, or plants, or algae, or protists. Some of the organisms may have even belonged to groups of eukaryotes which are no longer alive on Earth today. But to be honest, scientists aren't really sure. After decades of studying the Ediacara biota, scientists still aren't sure what produced the fossils. It remains a subject of intense debate among paleontologists. But paleontologists are convinced of one thing. These life forms were the first truly large, complex, multicellular organisms in Earth history. They made up the ocean's first major ecosystem of macroscopic life, and they did many, if not all of the things that you find in animals. Organisms in the Ediacara biota reproduced through sexual reproduction. Some of them produced biomineralized skeletons. In other words, they produce shells made up of carbonate minerals. And many of the organisms in the Ediacara biota were capable of movement. They could move along the seafloor under their own power. For the first time in Earth history, life forms began to stir and mix the sediment in large amounts. Up until this point, the seafloor had been covered by microbial mats almost entirely. Now, animal-like organisms were consuming those microbial mats and mixing the sediment under the seafloor. Although the organisms of the Ediacara biota did many of the things that you can see in modern animals, they ultimately disappeared around 540 million years ago and went extinct. There are no organisms of this type alive on Earth today, adding to their mystery. What we do know is that the Ediacara biota was just a prelude for bigger things to come. Not long after they disappeared, there was a spectacular radiation of animal life between 535 and 510 million years ago. We refer to this radiation as the Cambrian explosion. It was an explosion in animal diversity. Virtually all major groups of living animals, most phyla of animal life, originated within the span of 25 million years. And beyond that, there was a huge increase in the number of animal species during the Cambrian explosion, and animals began to exhibit a spectacular diversity of morphology and lifestyle. They were doing new things, things that had never been seen throughout Earth history. But this explosion in diversity was only the beginning. Animals were now poised to take over the world. And over the next 500 million years, their evolution would come to shape the world that we live in today.